the day that Maria Miran streamed after Christmas was the most important day in your life. But for me, it was only Friday. Welcome to the Friday stream chat. How are you guys doing? Hopefully you are doing an outstanding today and hopefully you had a great holiday season. Or for some of you, it may not even be over yet. You might still be celebrating the holidays. And if so, I wish wonderful days for you. So hope you had a good Christmas, Hanukkah, or Boxing Day, or Kwanzaa, or Festivus, or as I said on the Twitter machine, whatever makes this time of year special for you. I hope you get to enjoy it with people that you're close to, and hopefully it was a wonderful time. And hopefully it's still a wonderful time if you're continuing to celebrate. Uh, but yeah, we're here today on uh, Ye Olde Bezos TV to play yeah. some... Oh, here we go already. To play some BTA. So everybody, welcome to the stream. I saw Erst in there, Serene Hunts, General Quarters, Track Tension, Levenin. We had Capsy showing up. We've got Graveli and Bolo in the chat. We've got Gemini Twin. Oh, we saw BB55 guns swinging in from the YouTubes and had to go take care of, uh, I guess, a family emergency. So hopefully that goes well for you. Sorry to hear about that 55 guns, but I hope everything works out. We got Jafaus. We've got Dark yeah. Sarah. Good Lord, you guys, you guys are turning it out already. And before we even get the stream underway... We gotta thank the generous folks out here. Let me see. We have we have Ajax in the chat, first of all, resubbing for their second month. So first of all, thank you for two months, Ajax. Saying woo, resub. Indeed. Indeed. And thank you for the resub. Uh, before Bolo, I'm right away splatting you guys with 20 gifted subs right yeah. off the bat. So thank you for that, Bolo. And Dark Sarah, not to be outdone, answer him back with five more gifted subs. You guys are going ham already, you insane mofos. Yeah. And Thanosi as well. <laughs> what, what are you guys trying to do to me right now? What are you trying to do? Thanosi with ten more gifted subs right at the beginning of the stream before we even get started. Thank you guys so, so much. For the insane, yep. insane generosity. And Erst as well. With five gifted subs. Guys, you know there aren't that many people in this channel, right? Like, I appreciate it, but all these people are going to be getting subs and wondering what the hell's going on. But you know what? We've actually gotten quite a few people that showed up uh, and, and joined our little community here as a yep. direct result of that. So thank you guys for the insane generosity. Yeah, press ganging, Bolo. That's exactly what it is. And Rex as well, sneaking into their lurking spot in the back of the chat for three months. Rex, thank you so much for the three months. You guys, you guys. Why, why you gotta do this to me? Why you gotta do this to me? Making me feel all humble and shit right at the beginning of the stream. But thank you, really. Again, you guys do not have to support the channel in that way. But... It, it it fills my heart with joy and, and it means a whole lot to me. Thank you for supporting me, the content that I make, the channel, and of course the community. As we wouldn't be here if it weren't for you guys. And as Bolo says, I, I agree, yeah, yeah, fuck that, and let's kill something. I you know what? That's not a that's not a terrible idea. So let's head over to the game, shall we? Yeah. Uh oh. And there's General Quarters. Oh, I'm sorry. First of all, we got Digital Arc cheering a thousand bits right at the beginning of the stream. No message, just a thousand bits. Thank you, yeah. Digital Arc, for the Bezos bucks. And General Quarters as well for five more gifted subs. You guys are going ham. Is, is this what happens when I'm not around for a week? You guys just like... You get all backed up with your gift subs, and then you have to unload them and every. I mean, they're so sticky, they get everywhere. And then you get how hard it is to clean gift subs out of your hair. It's, it's gross. Wait, what? Anyway. So we're here on the Argo, as we, as we do. You guys should be familiar with this already, and as we left off last stream, we were sitting in pretty good place financially. 
uh, had made quite a bit of money, made a whole lot of sales on mix and old equipment that we didn't need, got plenty, plenty of salvage. So we're doing very well for ourselves. We did have some injuries for some of our longtime folks, but they did make it out. Uh, unfortunately, we did add a name to the memorial wall last time around. Caffeinated lemur was, uh, was unfortunately our casualty of the day. But as you guys were talking about in the chats, uh, we did get a hatchet man out of the deal. So it wasn't a life given in vain. And we took our, we took our vengeance. It, it was, it was served piping cold as, as all revenge should be. Uh, and speaking of, speaking of the lumberjack, We've also got a few other things. We, we also managed to schwack Santa, finally, for those of you that were not here to see it. And we got this ugly monstrosity as a result. Uh, the quad mech reward for beating Santa. Um, and uh, we did it with... Well, let's just say our victory was measured in megatons. But we did win. So uh, that's that's the important thing. A W is a W. So Karos said they wanted to lay claim to this. And I don't think that's a terrible idea because Karos is technically a mech pilot. And um, they haven't had a chance to be in a mech pretty much this entire campaign. They sort of became our designated VTOL pilot. Oh, trust me, Capsty. This thing is... I, I don't like it. It's ugly. I do not like it. Um, but it's also an 80-ton mech, and it's a quad mech. It has a turret as well. So, like, the, the great thing about this is because it has a turret on the top, that means it has the same thing. Y yeah, that's true. We never actually laid eyes on Santa, but we did find the wreckage after after the, the nuclear fallout had cleared. Uh, but the turret allows this mech to fire in 360 degrees, which can actually be very, very useful. Um, so we can definitely do some stuff with this thing. Um, again, it is based on the Goliath, but they call it Santa's sled. But yeah, we, we, we could probably do some stuff with this. I, I don't know that we will right away, but of course we are running out of room in the mech bay as well, so there's going to be that consideration. So you guys may have also seen... In addition to the Hatchet Man, which we will get to shortly, we also had uh, some Hunchback Heresy on the Twitter machine, and I don't know if I'm going to do what I proposed, but, um, oh my, Chad, thank you guys for the level 7 hype train, holy shit. You guys, you guys went crazy on that one, so choo-choo indeed. Good work. Thank you guys for the insane generosity right at the beginning of the stream. Um, but yeah, so I was I was toying around with an all melee design of the hunchback just to go I'll grab a line. It doesn't mean much of anything. It just means that you guys contributed a whole lot of support in a very short period of time. Uh, what a hype train does in terms of Twitch means that we will get just a little bit more attention on the front page for a limited period of time as a direct result of that hype train because it tells Twitch that there's a lot going on in this channel. So maybe we'll get some new viewers as a result. But either way, that's not why you guys do it. And again, I appreciate the insane outpouring of support and generosity. So it's, it's Christmas has already passed, but thank you so much for the gift. Uh, but yeah, I want to I wanna try the all melee design with the hunchback. I don't know if we will because it is kind of a goofy idea. Um, and considering that we lost a pilot in a hunchback last stream, that might lead to even more of that. But uh, we, we will see. But for first, first and foremost, first and foremost, we got this hatchet man, which for those of you that have been here for a while, you already know our man Erst. The tried and true pilot of the Disco Inferno, a small laser boat, has been asking for something, anything, with a melee weapon on it. Specifically a hatchet man or axe man. Well, here we go. We, we now have a hatchet man. So I think it's only fitting that as the only remaining pilot in the company that has not had a mech upgrade this entire campaign, it might finally be time. Now that we have the right mech for the job, I think it might finally be time. 
And of course, Urs did already contact me on the Twitter machine to tell me kind of what they wanted to do with this thing, so I have an idea of where we're going to go with it. Uh, I had my own ideas, of course, but at the same time, if, if we're only going to have one pilot in this mech, then obviously we want them to be happy with the design. So we'll do what we do, max out the armor, clear out all the weapon systems, and if I recall correctly, I might have to pull up the Twitter machine to uh, remind myself, but if I recall correctly, we wanted some small heavy lasers, which I don't think we have. Oh no, we do. We have exactly enough small heavy lasers. Uh, we wanted the double heat sink kit, which of course you do with heavy lasers because they're very hot. <laughs> and Solaris Geo says, seem to get good results from Disco Bag, but uh, good luck in the full melee. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing, is the, the, the hunchbacks that we have put together are not bad for what they do, but they're not heretical enough for me. It's not good enough. Uh, but here's, here's my, my question for you guys right away. And I don't... Before we get started with this... Ian? There, there was a, a discussion that I had with a trusted lieutenant about the Disco Inferno and whether we should actually break it down. And Mate coming in with 10 gifted subs as well. Welcome to the stream, Mate. Good to see you. Glad you could join us again for another stream. Hopefully you are having an outstanding Friday so far. And if not, hopefully it'll be just a bit better now that you're here. Uh, but a thing to think about here on the Disco Inferno is we already have, like, the lower legs, we have the upper arms, we have a lot of melee parts on this thing. Uh, but we also have a 300 engine in it, and some other stuff that I would like to take off of it in order to put on the hatchet mech. Now, with that being said, this is our last light mech, so... If we take everything off of this and store it, then we no longer have a light mech for the purposes of duels, and that might be a problem. So that's that's kind of the the dichotomy here is we can make the hatchet man better, but then we basically don't have a light mech for dual purposes anymore. Or we have a less effective mech, I guess. I don't want to keep the Disco Inferno built if we're not actually going to be using it. So I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how I feel about it. But I think at the very least we can go ahead and strip... Uh, well, I'm not going to strip all the equipment, but I am going to take off the melee parts so that we can put them on the Hatchet Man. Uh, the rest of the stuff we can leave in here, because we do have some 300 class engines that we can use. And of course, all of these parts weigh nothing, so it's not going to hurt the Hatchet Man to put them on there. Uh, Dark Sarah, we... We definitely do the duels when, uh, when we get here. We, we, when we find them, when they're available, we're definitely going to do them, because that's money. Um, but it's not a huge loss if we can't do light mech duels. It's just frustrating when we have to give something up, when we have to give up options. Uh, but there we go. Now that we've gotten the melee parts out, we can go back to the Hatchet Man and, and do what we intended to do. So let's get rid of all that. We'll max the armor. I'm going to pop the engine core out of there because we're definitely going to put something bigger in it. We just don't know how big quite yet. And in the meantime, oh, you know what, chat? We could put in the AES legs as well. I didn't even realize we had some of these. So there's, there's the description for those of you that don't know. Yeah, yeah, and let there be pulse lasers, and it was good. Yeah, AES legs do actually weigh something, so maybe not the best idea, but the thing about the AES legs is they give you a huge bonus to stability. Um, the only problem is it's going to eat up all the critical slots in the legs, so maybe, maybe not the best idea. But we'll go ahead and stick the free parts in here. Is this? Yeah, all right, there we go. We'll put the hand in there. So there we go. Now we have now we have a lot of melee parts in the Hatchet Man, and it doesn't take any weight, so we're good. Uh, in the meantime, slap those heavy lasers back in there. 
And let's see. What do we got in terms of armor? Well, we don't have heavy pharaoh, which was the request, but we do have heavy armor plating. Unfortunately, that's going to eat up more weight and not less. We could go with regular pharaoh on this one, though, because we're using energy weapons and not, not ammo-fed weapons. So we don't have to worry about an ammo explosion. Um, we can also probably just use regular double heat sinks. Oh, we've got another heat sink in here somewhere. There it is. Could probably use regular double heat sinks um, because this is mostly going to be a melee mech. So we don't necessarily need the extra critical slots from the clan version. Uh, let me see. Let me let me jump over to the Twitter machine real quick so I can look at Erst's post about what exactly they wanted to do. I know we wanted to try to put triple strength in it, but I don't think we have triple strength. Yeah, and then the rest of the way go into the engine core. So yeah, again, it's it's going to be mostly a melee machine, and that's okay. We we sort of intended that for a hatchet man. Um, you could be right. I might have just missed it, Erst. Uh, but I don't think we do. I, I don't think we have any triple strength. I know we've seen it in the store a couple of times. Uh, but like so many other things, we didn't really have the money for it at the time, and so didn't buy it. We do have mask, which isn't quite the same thing. I mean, obviously, triple strength is gonna give you the, the melee damage bonus, which is what you want. Uh, I also don't think they have any for sale in the store, but we could check. Dang it, I don't want to have to undo all this, but let's go check the store. Let's go check the store. Uh, BTA does have uh, cockpit slots, Ajax. We just don't currently have any that we can install. Yeah, unfortunately, Ajax, I don't, they, I'm not going to say it doesn't work. The loadout system does work. The only problem is you have to strip everything off the mech in order to load a layout, which then involves you having to, one, remove everything, and then two, save that design, then load it back up, and then load your, say, your, uh, your loadout. So it's, it's a little complicated, and we're not making that many modifications anyway, so... Not a huge deal. Um, oh, that's right. I forgot they had these rotary auto cannons that I was looking at, too. See, we weren't even supposed to be in Capellan space. We just sort of ended up here as a result of the Santa mission. Uh, but yeah, no triple strength, unfortunately. But how many other opportunities are we going to get for Rack 5 and Rack 2s? We so rarely see them. I say we buy them. We got almost 18 million C bills, and we may never use them. But I'm going to treat it like protection. I'd rather have it and never need it than the other way around. All right. So back to the mech bay. I forget, how much, how much does the triple strength weigh? Does it weigh anything, or is it free weight? I know it takes up critical slots, but we haven't used it yet. Okay, so it, it is weightless. I thought so, but I wasn't 100% sure. So if it's weightless, then all we have to do is leave room in the mech for it, and we should be good. And we'll go ahead and stick all of these parts back in. We'll go with the kung fu legs so that we can be kung fu fighting. And then, obviously, we, we would love to put the mask in, but that's two and a half tons. And we want to save that for the biggest engine possible. So do all that. And then slap in the double heat sink kits. We'll also go with the regular Pharaoh, just to lighten it up a little bit more. And that gives us almost 20 tons to devote to an engine core. 
Uh, track tension in BTA, I do not think that's the case. What it does instead is it just automatically increases the amount of heat that the mech generates and is always on, as opposed to like tabletop rules where you have to activate it and then you do more damage based on your heat. Uh, so let's have a look at our heat dissipation here. We're at 15 over. We can easily fix that with a couple of doubles. And that's not quite heat neutral, but I think it's close enough. And then let's see what kind of engine core we can stick in this puppy. Uh, we got a 325. Let's start there. Now, 325 is just a little too heavy. 285, also a little too heavy. All right, all right. Well, you know what? Something else I hadn't considered. We can slap an XL in this thing. Yeah, no light engine erst, only an XL, unfortunately. If we find a light engine, uh, I'll definitely put one in, but, uh, because the light engine is, is absolutely safer, but for right now, the XL is all we've got. So with the XL reducing the engine weight, that gives us a lot more options. So let's see what we got here. Let's just go crazy and say 350. 350, we could almost do. Yeah, we could, we will probably end up removing the heat sinks, but I wanted it to be uh, heat neutral before we tried. Let's see. Oh, you know what? You're right, Erst. We could, uh, we could drop some of the jump jets. Or we could just drop all the jump jets. But then we've got a ton to play with. However, that's not a terrible thing because then we could stick an ECM in it. So with this, our heat dissipation immediately drops to negative 27, so we can lose both heat sinks. Yeah, and we're still 15. We're, we're negative 15 on the delta. So a 350 core gives us what? A 913. That's pretty impressive, but you know what? You could be right track tension. Uh, maybe an XL engine isn't a great idea for a brawler, but at the same time, uh, as I've said before, this company is kind of like safety third or fourth. Let's, let's try a 375. 375 is a little bit too much. Maybe... Okay, so 350 is not enough. 360 gets us right there. All right, I like it. I like it. And the 360 is going to give us a 914. So what do we think about this, chat? We can easily gobble up that last ton and a half with some extra equipment. Uh, for example, stick in an ECM suite so they can't, uh, they can't sensor lock our boy. And then, obviously, the mask we can't stick in there because it's two tons. But uh, we, we've got some other stuff we could put in. Yeah, but um, for now... Yeah, I was going to say, or is the, the heat will go up, the weight should not, but uh, we, we can burn that bridge when we get there. For now, I'm trying to make what we have work for what we're installing. We, we obviously will revise the design as needed. You know what? How much, how much does Harjo weigh? Weighs half a ton? Nah, I don't think that's worth it. Let's see, let's see. What can we put in this thing? The uh, track tension, I don't know that it does weird things with a hatchet. I know the AI doesn't necessarily respond to... It, it doesn't respond to melee in the same way that we do because it views melee as a last resort. Uh, it does not use it in the same strategic way that human players tend to. So maybe, okay, I see yours. Um, maybe if, well, let's do this first. Let's see about sticking hard gel. And this is, this is hard gel that we got from um, one of the Solaris mechs. But if we stick the hard gel in these locations, 
and then we'll, we will see what is the biggest engine that we can stick in this puppy. So we'll start with a 325. 325 is a little much. Yeah, so unfortunately we don't, we don't really have the intermediate engine that we need. A 330 or a 340 would probably be good to give us the weight that we're looking for. But instead, that gives us another ton and a half. And uh, yeah, as Urs is saying, that still gives us an 812. So either way, it's still a damn fast mech. And that's what we want for sure. Uh, we could... Maybe just stick a, you know, a laser in it or something. Just, just to eat up the weight. What do we got? Medium pulse laser, two tons. Regular pulse lasers, also two tons. What do we have? What do we have? What toys could we play with? Maybe another medium laser, just for fun. Let's see, let's see, let's see. It might just be smart to go with like a medium pulse laser or just a couple of mediums. Frank's Red Hot, slap that shit on everything. No, we're about a half a ton overweight, which we can easily take care of by just reducing some of the leg armor here. Not, not a big deal. Well, then again, this is going to be a brawler. I think we need all the armor we can get. We'll go with this. It's a half ton wasted, but we're going to revise the design. Yeah, it's unneeded, Urs, but I don't want to get the, the goofy notification about, oh, your mech is underweight, you have to fix it. So, again... This is an interim design. Once we get the triple strength, we're going to have to rebalance it anyway, so. We could do a probe. That actually wouldn't be a terrible idea. Uh, since our man's is going to be getting up close and personal, maybe a probe is a better idea. So we could do the clan active. We could do the beagle. Actually, the beagle would be perfect. Uh, dicks and balls. Let's put the ECM in there, and then we'll put the beagle in the torso. And that leaves us just a little bit over. And we're gonna, we're gonna do the meta here, chat. We're gonna do the meta thing. And I'm gonna, there we go. We're gonna cheese it. And there we go. Oh, right. What are we going to call this thing, Erst? I know you've thrown out multiple names here, so have you settled on one? Uh, Ajax, we do finally have a C3 Master. The only reason that I don't want to use C3 is because we have so much ECM in our company already. Uh, and the ECM, even if it's friendly, will interfere with the regular C3 system. So... It's not a good fit for us. It's a lot of waste and weight, or we would have to get rid of the ECM from all the mechs that have it. And honestly, to me, the ECM is a better use of the tonnage than the C3 system. Now, if we could get our hands on, like, the C3i that Blake is to use, that's shielded against ECM, so I would absolutely put those in our mechs if we had them. And Erst wants to go with Zerg phase. I'm okay with that. It's not necessarily in keeping with the theme, but uh, it's not a disco-themed mercenary company. Confirm, Battletech. What are you doing? All right, so that's going to be 10 days, and I think we had at least one more mission in the commands. Oh, never mind. We're in Capellan space. I forgot about that. Well, it looks like the first thing we're doing, chat, is uh, heading back to what is ostensibly our home territory in the Concordant. I do not remember where we were. Oh, we were on Flanagan's, that's right. Let's see. Let's see. 
What else do we have in the vicinity? Because it looks like there's a hot spot right here. Who is this? This is... Oh. It's a Davian world being invaded by the Concordant, and we've got 18 days to get there. You know what? It's going to be 19 days for the trip. I think this is right up our alley. Don't worry, chat. I can words. It's going to be right up our alley. It's on the attack, so we're taking a world. It's a good, it's a factory world. It's inner sphere level. It's an Arctic world, which is going to be great for our laser boats. I think this is a perfect fit. We're yeah. going to do it, chat. We're going to Pinard. And tip top flop says murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill. I agree. Code 187. Murder, death, kill. Let's head out there, Chad. Let's, let's get out here. And Erst, right after screaming, kill the Fed Sons, smacks Tip Top Flop in the face with a gift sub. Erst, thank you for the generosity. And Tip Top, welcome to the Cult of Bad Tactical Decisions. Hopefully you enjoy your stay and the Ecto Cooler. For it is the only flavor of Kool-Aid that we have in this cult. Oh, what are you now? Ah, more Merc news. Thank you, BTA. As I said before, uh, I'm, I, I don't really care about any of the Merc news stuff, but there's a part of me that believes um, if I don't have the Merc news going, then we don't actually get the story events, and I do want those to happen, so. And Aussie Viking, wow, cut the stream! I'm only on 20 YouTuber hours behind. Well, that's good. You're you're getting closer. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we are currently, I believe we're on episode 60 on the YouTube series. Um, unfortunately, I'm a little bit behind on the VOD posting. So uh, there, there are still many, many hours that need to be posted. But for those of you that have been following the YouTube series, thank you very much. And you are catching up slowly. And there's the financial report, 1.3 million C-bills to keep this company afloat. But as you can clearly see, we're doing a great job of it because our morale is essentially maxed out at this point. And uh, we are almost there. Ambushed. Why are we? Oh, right. Because we're enemies with Clan Wolf and somehow Clan Wolf has a kill team all the way down here on the opposite end of the yeah. galaxy. Makes makes perfect sense perfect sense bta and thanosi gifting a sub to aussie viking thanosi thank you so much for the generosity as well as i always say you guys do not have to do this but i appreciate it i really really do so yeah here here we go with the ambush which i think is actually kind of funny so for those of you that don't know these will pop up whenever you Whenever you have a faction as an enemy, you will get these missions where you get ambushed by that faction no matter where you are. And if you manage to defeat the enemies, and it's usually a one-on-two or a, you know, something like that. They only give you one pilot. Um, but if you're able to beat the mission, then they essentially say, hey, you're pretty good, kid, with the finger guns, and then they increase their rep with you and it's like guys if you just didn't attack me then then none of your people would die and, and i get it it's it's an opportunity for the game to try to i guess balance out the relations but it's still kind of funny i wish they would at least put a limitation on where it can happen because we shouldn't be getting ambushed by Clan Wolf in Torian space. That makes absolutely no sense. I, I mean, I agree, Ajax. It's not that Clan Wolf could never find us. It's just that it doesn't make a lot of sense for them to be here. Uh, of course, with this being a one on multiple, we're definitely going to go with the commander in the Diet Awesome because the commander is a headshot machine. And that's going to make this battle go a whole lot faster. There you go, Tipta. We, we will blame the Dragoons for this. 
it's their fault. Then again, I mean, it's Clan Wolf. They're basically, of all the clans, they are the Mary Sue clan of Battletech. So, yeah, okay, I get it. Clan Wolf can totally find me no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, no matter the circumstances. It's, it's like bad DM fanfic is what it is. Where, where the DM really, really, really wants their favorite faction or character to track you down, even if it makes absolutely no sense. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. I get it. There are limitations to the game. No big deal. Remember, Battletech, as originally envisioned, was not meant to exp was not meant to span the entire inner sphere. So, there are certain limitations uh, that stop things. Like it, it never expected us to be traveling this distance. Yeah, yeah. Clan Wolf designed this mission. They absolutely did. All right, this should be a familiar map to any of you that have been watching this campaign for a while or playing BTA for a while. This is a very common dual map. So let's see what we're up against. Uh, all right. That looks like a dire wolf, and I'm not sure what this is. Is that? No, it's not a mad cat. I'm not sure what that is, but we will find out shortly. All right, here we go. Actually, you know what? This is a two-on-one, and at least one of those is an assault mech. I am not going to charge them, because that would be not a great idea. I will let them come to me, even if they have elevation. Ah, uh, it is a linebacker. All right, I see you. I see you. All right, so it does not look like that is a PPC. Oh, and it's a Warhawk, not a Direwolf. Never mind. So heavy large lasers, those are definitely going to hurt if they hit, but as long as we stay mobile, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And then what are we dealing with on the linebacker? Yeah, some ER PPCs. You are definitely going to be target numero uno. So first things first, I'm the realist. I think... Again, because it's a one-on-one, -on -one, let's... Let's do our best not to expose ourselves to too much enemy fire, and we'll instead just go for headshots. I was hoping we'd hit on at least one of those, even though the shot was obstructed. Yeah, that, that, that was some big whiffs. I am not surprised. Let's see. Need to be facing our armor in the right direction. And again, I don't... Why the hell? Oh, is it? It's because of this, isn't it? I'm trying to figure out why we basically have no chance to hit on these guys. It doesn't make a lot of sense. This guy's only got four evasion. And normally, we are much better shots than this. So what? what, what is this guy? Is it because of the spores? It is because of the spores. All right. So maybe we don't take a shot at the linebacker, even though it's the bigger threat. Try and put some damage on the Warhawk. All right, there we go. Get some sensor impairment at least. Yeah, that's that's probably the other thing that's hurting us is our own sensor impairment from this guy's PPCs. Oh, and we've got an ace pilot as well. Yeah, this is looking not so good. Not so good. Sadly, with these being clan mechs, they are going to be faster than us no matter what we do. 
But as long as we get precision shot, we get chances at headshots, and that's what matters. Honestly, we're not even going to get any evasion for this, so I don't think there's any point in moving. I think we just stand and deliver. Uh, technically, the linebacker is the bigger threat, but we got better chances to hit the Warhawk because it has less evasion and no spores. So I think we precise strike the Warhawk, go for the headshot, and see if we get lucky and take him off the field. And that is why I bring the commander for these missions. That's a linebacker no longer on the field. Or I'm sorry, that's the Warhawk no longer on the field. We are going to take some hits. I was expecting that. But we're not going to outrun the linebacker, so our next best bet is going to be to getting close. Because clan mechs suck in melee. And we have a tonnage advantage as well, so... Damn it. Well, I was hoping we wouldn't have to charge, but it looks like we're going to. I don't know if we should, though. The potential for self-damage is still high. Huh. What are our chances? We got 79% chance if we charge. Yeah. Screw it. Let's do it. And we did get the hit. Unfortunately, we stripped some of our own armor, which they're absolutely going to use against us. I mean, on the other hand, it's not actually possible for the commander to die, so the only thing we risk is the mech. So we're going to stand and deliver, go for headshots, as you do. And we did not get the headshot, but we definitely did some damage. Now let's see what homeboy's gonna do. Oh, he's gonna fire at point blank as well. All right. I don't know if you want to have a slug fight with a mech that outweighs you by 15 tons. Well, I'm sorry, it's only 10 tons, but you are more than welcome. Let's see. So we took the armor off the leg, which means we're gonna hit him from the right side, do the kick. And the PPC. Oh yeah, we can kick and shoot track tension. And we are absolutely going to give it a shot. Wait a minute, I can't... There we go. That's the right side. The right side is the right side. So we're giving them the full alpha kick, Chet. As you do. And there goes the leg. And the shots. And homeboy's taking a dirt nap. Take a break, loser. You earned it. Oh, and he ejected. Because apparently that's a thing clanners do now. There you go. And as I said before, that's why I take the commander. Because even though the commander is maxed out on all their skills, when you absolutely need to put two people's dick in the dirt with only one mech, that's the best way to get it done. That is the best way to get it done. Yeah, exactly, troubleshooter. My honor! And then immediately hits the yeet seat. So unfortunately, the Diet Awesome did take some damage in that engagement, but that's, that's to be expected. Um, oh my. Oh my. They are being exceptionally generous on the salvage this go-around. I mean, we'd be insane not to take the Warhawk, because that's full salvage. And we might as well take the linebacker parts, too. Shit. But a 390 engine, though, that's really tempting. The 390, does does that come out? Yeah, it's got to come out of the Warhawk, because the Warhawk is the 85-tonner. And Cody, welcome to the stream on a Friday. Glad you could join us. Feels like we haven't seen you in a few, but glad you're here. Good to see you. Hopefully your holiday has been going well. Yeah, I think we take the mech parts, chat. Because we're going to get some more stuff anyway. 
And we got the 390 engine plus a bunch of Climax Cells. Man, look at that. That is beautiful. That is some good ass salvage right there, chat. Although, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense that we don't get to keep all of the salvage because they attacked us directly. So we should get to keep everything, if you think about it. Like, we're not making any money on the mission itself, so we should get to keep everything. Uh, RC Viking, you would technically get the engine. Unfortunately, in BTA at least, most of the internals on Clan Omnimex are not removable. But we did get the 390 from the salvage as well. Darius. Thank you, Darius. All right. So first things first, we got to fix up the Black Knight. Or the Diet Awesome. It's just some actuator damage. We didn't lose any essential components, so... Not a big deal, actually. Only one day. Not the worst thing in the world. And then the other thing to consider is... I mean, we don't technically have the next mech base. We gotta spend 2.1 million sea bills to get that second set of mech bays opened up. Maybe it's time we considered it. But then there's also the increasing our drop weight limit, which we, we have definitely been bumping into the tonnage limit as well. So um, part of me wants to go with the drop weight limit, but part of me wants to go with the second mech bay as well. I'm not 100% I'm not sure which is the better buy currently. I'm leaning towards drop tonnage, though. It'll also be a faster upgrade. Uh. Yeah, we are basically... I mean, we're running a bunch of assault mechs right now, so... Let's see. Yeah, I think we go for the tonnage for now. Because we're about to get stuck into a flashpoint anyway, and when we do, we're going to have to pass time anyway, so that'll be a good opportunity to get that upgrade finished. With that being said, in the mech bay, we do need to give some consideration to potentially breaking down or storing one, if not more, of these mechs. Unfortunately, all of these mechs currently have a pilot, with the exception of the trainers, which I do want to get rookies on the field. Okay, like it or not, I think, I think we're going to store the Disco Inferno. But before we do, I'm going to save the design as it currently exists. And then that way, we'll have the ability to rebuild it sometime later. Should the need arise. So we'll go ahead and store it. That'll give us one more open slot, which we can then use to start putting some of these mechs together. And the Warhawk, again... More ugly as hell mech design from the clans. But let's see what we got here. Yeah? Okay, alright, I see you. Heavy lasers. Again, big laser boat. Not surprising. And Mara strolling into the chat, renewing their sub for a third month. Mara says, fear not, for have arrived to blow shit up. And uh, for those of you that are not in on that particular meme, Mara is a goddamn surgeon with their artillery piece. Going all the way back to the ballista and even now with a long time. Uh, if you have not been keeping up with the streams, Mara be making them headshots. 
So this is true. Mara has arrived. And thank you, Mara, for the support. Three months. Thank you so much for sticking around. Yeah, yeah. This is true, Dutch Irishman, but this is this is the trade-off. You know, it's I think it's fair because you lose some flexibility in the clan mechs in terms of internal components, but the Omni slots give you a ton of weapon flexibility. Um with that being said though. I mean, I'm not against the idea of swapping this out for the rifle. I mean, you know, we could also take and uh, stick the plasma rifles on this thing. And probably, probably put more of them on here. Do we... Do we do it, chat? Do we make this the bug zapper too? I think there's some real potential here. All right, chat. We'll give it a shot. We will give it a shot. Well, we're not going to we're not going to break this thing down yet cuz we might find another use for it, but we will go ahead and strip the equipment out of it at least for now. Cuz that won't take us any time. It'll only cost us a little bit of money. And then let's have a look. See what we can do with this thing. I apologize in advance. I, I do still have some bad habits about mech design. I, I do still try to manually remove everything, even when I know I don't have to do that. So this is the precision computer, which is going to give us breaching shot. I don't know if we even really need that. I'll consider it. But let's try sticking some plasma rifles in here first and see how far we can get with that, because we've actually got six of them. And these things weigh about as much as a snub PPC. But man, they are so good. Uh, Mate, it's not necessarily um, that there's anything wrong with the bug zapper. Mainly the reason that I'm taking it apart is to get the plasma rifles that are on it. Uh, so we can't, we can do five. So maybe we do something like that because symmetry is important. And can we put... Now, we cannot put lower arm actuators on here, so they have to just ride like they do. The only problem is going to be ammo. And, again, because we don't... We don't have a lot of control over the internal components of Omnimex, we can't, like... We can't put in different armor, we can't put in a different XL engine, so... We kind of just have what we have. Th those, that's it. Maybe, let's see. I don't know. It's not going to give us enough weight. Let's see. Let's see. We want to do ammo. Let's let's stick some plasma ammo in this thing for starters. Just so we know how much tonnage we've got to play with. That'll give us three tons that we can use to put in another weapon system or potentially some more equipment. So, as much as I hate to say it, I feel like... I feel like the Warhawk isn't much of an upgrade. I mean, it's got a bigger engine, but it's still going to be slower than the Rifleman because we put an upgraded engine into the Rifleman. The only advantage it's going to have is more armor. Now, there was a fire computer or a firing computer, but we took it out because it was two tons. Yeah, I mean, the heat is not a problem with this thing, but we can't remove the heat sinks either. So there's there's... Like, that, that's the problem with the clan Omnis. We can't remove the E-cooling, we can't change the engine, we can't remove any of these heat sinks. So, like, it's all stuck in there. 
So again, other than giving it more armor, like the only upgrade this provides over the current iteration of the Bug Zapper is that it has more armor. But otherwise, it's inferior in almost every way. It's slower. It doesn't hit as hard. Uh, well, see, that's the thing, Gravelion. It's not actually 40 shots. It's actually only 10 shots because we're basically going to be shooting this thing every turn. And we've already been discovering, especially on some of the harder missions, that sometimes 10 turns of shooting is not enough. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I understand. Um, I understand if Graveline wants a bigger mech, but like to me, I think we do something different with it. We can just keep the bug zapper the way it is, put somebody else in it, and... Well, it was plenty at the time, Erst, but as we're getting into bigger missions with more enemies, ten turns is very quickly becoming not enough. Yeah, when the missions were easier, ten turns was more than enough, but now we need to reassess. Ah, uh, we don't future-proof first, you know that. I barely present-proof the mechs that we use. Let's see, let's see. I mean, it is a Warhawk, though, and it's an Omni-mech, which means our options are effectively unlimited. We, we can do whatever we want with this thing. We, we don't have to turn it into the Bug Zapper. I'm just trying to decide what we do with it instead. Uh, track tension, I think we do. The, the issue is going to be heat, I think, because we've got so many additional heat sinks in here, so I don't think we can actually do that. Um, especially if we're using the clan PPCs, I don't think there's any way to make that work. I mean, maybe there is? Yeah, actually, we could do that. We could make it the Prime, give it four PPCs. That's not a bad setup, to be honest. The heat management is still going to be ass. Uh. What do we think, chat? Do we just drop a little bit of armor and make this a prime? Well, we don't have to do that. There we go. In fact, we could probably... Yeah, there we go. We can max the armor on this thing. Do we have an exchanger? I, I think we did at one point. I don't know if we still do or if we use it. Oh, no, we do have an exchanger. There you go. That might actually be two, ten two tons well spent. That almost makes us heat neutral. If we drop a couple of heat sinks. Whoa, shit. Didn't mean to do that. Meant to take out the heat sink, not the PPC. Tell you what, though, maybe. I know it's a little bit of a downgrade in damage. Nah, they, they weigh more. I was thinking we could go with regular Intersphere ER PPCs, but I forgot that they weigh a little bit more. I mean, maybe we just keep the design as it is. Drop the exchanger. I mean, it's it's good, but I don't think it's really enough. Because once we drop the additional two heat sinks, then we're still going to be in roughly the same place heat-wise. So we don't really gain anything from it. And I see you, Ajax. Gotta get this water. Well, I'd say the only problem with dropping armor is we would have to lose two tons of armor, which is actually quite a bit. Oh, 
Also, we tend to go armor heavy, for obvious reasons. But I'm not a completely against the idea. We, we can see. What does the armor look like? What does the armor look like if we try to drop two tons of it? And I'm mostly just trying to take equally from all locations. But obviously we're we're favoring the legs quite a bit in terms of where we're removing armor from. Is that enough? Almost. Yeah, 55 guns, real life does have a way of kind of ruining our fun, but unfortunately that's that's just the breaks. I do hope everything works out a little better for you, given what's going on, but, uh, unfortunately, real life does, does get in the way on occasion. I'm also not against the Gauss, Gravelion. Y you guys know I love me some Gauss rifles. But there is something to be said about the engagement longevity that PPCs give us. And while I welcome to the stream on a Friday, glad you could join us. And while I cannot reciprocate your feelings because I have to have enough room in my heart for everyone in the company, we are still glad to see you all the same. I mean, track tension, heat sinks, heat sinks and, and clan mechs is like peas and carrots. Like, you don't. You don't run a clan mech without half of it being heat sink. That's just how it works. Let's see. When the exchanger, that gets our heat delta to five. So what are we thinking? Do we go with a PPC machine or do we turn this thing into a gauss boat instead? I'm good either way. You guys know I'm easy. I do prefer Gauss over PPCs. But uh, at the same time, I, I, am, I am open to suggestions, as always. This is true. Gauss is not a heat issue. We could potentially gain a lot of additional weight by losing the heat sinks. But, in fairness to the design itself, a lot of the heat sinks in this mech cannot be removed anyway. So, turning it into something other than an energy boat is going to limit our ability to mess with it in the first place. Yeah, what, what Ajax is saying, basically. The PPCs are good for this particular model because so many of the heat sinks are integrated. Even if we put in Gauss instead, we've still got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heat sinks that we can't remove. So that's at least seven tons that we can't play with. Well, it seems like generally people are saying go with it. So we, we will keep the big PPC energy for now. Again, it's going to be a little under-armored compared to what we typically run, but uh, we will see. We will see. In the meantime, I don't think we had any other mechs that we needed to put together. Um, but let me just double-check in case I missed something. No, I think we're good. I think we are good. For the time being, at least. All right. So Karos is out of action because of the mission. We got our upgrade going. Got almost a month until the financial report. So I say we go ahead and hit the flare-up. Then again... 
We could do these missions before the flare-up, though. That's another thing. Particle Pushing Cannoneer. That would be a great name, Matze, but I can tell you right now, right off the bat, there's no way that's going to fit. All the best names are too long. Oh, that's right. You're right, Graveline. I forgot. We got to put the plasma rifles back into the bug zapper. Good call. I completely forgot about that. Ah, uh, let's see. Plasma rifles, as you do. And I don't remember where the ammo was, but we'll figure it out. I mean, we could put it in the center torso. Not that we need to protect it. And then we had an AMS system in this thing as well. And there we go. Unfortunately, that's going to cost us four days, but it is what it is. Now. Because... Because missions don't actually take any time, my thinking is that we do these two missions for the Torians first before we start the flare-up, then hit the flare-up because we're going to have to pass time with the flare-up. We won't have to pass time on the missions. Yeah, it's it's a two skull planet, so I, I'm not expecting much of a challenge. Um, but of course, we got a solo duel here, so I think we do that first. It's also unlimited tonnage. Uh, it's only a one six if we win, but it's a solo duel. Um. I mean, at the moment, we don't really need the money. Uh, Aussie Viking, we did, in fact, we fought Santa last stream. It was the last mission that we did on the last stream. So if the VOD is still up, I don't know if it's fallen off the back end because it's been about a week. But if the VOD is still up, you can definitely go check that out. Oh, no, Digital Arc, we would definitely not do this. That We would not send Erst on this because it's a solo duel, but it's unlimited tonnage. So even if we send Erst without triple strength, he's going to have a hard time taking out, like, say, a heavy or an assault mech in a hatchet man. I think we go for money on this. Again, I'm, I tend to be more partial to salvage, but we're only going to get six picks. And we're not even guaranteed to get what we need out of it, so. All right. You know what? We haven't given General Quarters an opportunity to take out the, uh, the Night Star. And if it's an unlimited tonnage map, I can't think of a better reason to take out a 95-ton mech. Yeah, the, the PPC setup is not finished. We have to actually wait some time. And Caffeinated Lemur... Our most recent addition to the Memorial Wall, welcome to the stream on a Friday afternoon. Glad to see you, and hopefully you're doing well today. But I think it's an opportunity to give, uh... Hi, Rex. Well, good to see you, as always. Glad you could join us. If you don't manage to get back before the stream is over, as always, check out the VOD. We, we will keep you in our hearts. But yeah, let's let's give General Quarters an opportunity to to do their thing here. I think this will actually be the inaugural flight of the Night Star since we put it together. Uh, no, in this case, Viking, it was just a straight up died in the cockpit, not not a bleed out this time. A I guess an honorable death, if you consider a death against pirates to be honorable.
But caffeinated lemur went down fighting, and that's all we can ask. You can't win every battle, but at least don't, don't give up. All right. Wait, what? Hold up. Darius is saying this guy has to be seen to be believed. What, what am I missing here? Local powers are putting up some good stakes. Found an employer to back us. Okay, so apparently we're just going to kill some drunk guy. I guess that's how they do it out here in Torian space. Somebody gets drunk? Send some mercenaries to kill him. Makes perfect sense to me. Alright. Should be interesting to see what we're up against. Again, pretty common dual map. Unfortunately, it is a Night Star, so mobility is not going to be our strong suit. We'll just have to hope that uh, the massive alpha damage will make up for the lack of mobility. And we are up against... Oh, well, 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 shit. Would you look at that? Just a plain Jane Warhammer. I know it's a little late in the campaign, but, uh... I will definitely take a Warhammer if they're gonna give us one. And we've already got some parts in the hangars, so, uh... So, yeah, if, if we get enough parts off of this in Salvage, we could absolutely get ourselves a Warhammer before this is done. And, incidentally... The Night Star does happen to be primarily a, a missile boat. So I say we battle Lord and start shaving off that armor. Yeah, those PPCs are going to hurt, and the lack of evasion is going to make them hurt even more. Do we have any? Yeah, we're not able to obstruct line of sight at all, so we're just going to have to get in and get dirty. It's the only option we get. We do have some swarm ammo. Maybe that's not a bad idea. Try and split it up a little bit. Got some weird artifacting going on there. And those, he, he's getting a lot luckier with those PPCs than I thought he would. That's okay. We've got him in tonnage. And the swarms are definitely doing more damage, so I think that's, I think that's the play. Uh, we will try for a headshot. I don't know how good we're going to do, but we'll give him a, we'll give it a try. Okay. Well, there you go. Good shit, General Quarters. Got the engine crit and four salvageable parts. Now, the only unfortunate thing is we took the money and not the salvage. But as long as we get one part, one part of that Warhammer, I think we're good. Because if I remember right, we had three parts in storage. Yeah, there are, there is a bees ammo as well, which, and my understanding is it's kind of like a electronic warfare missile that interferes with sensors and hit chances. And let's see, salvage is, oh yeah, look at that, we got one part, I think that's enough, chat, let's see. Uh, it wasn't enough, son of a bitch. It's always something, Chet. It's always something. All right, well, the search for the Warhammer continues, I guess.
All right, caffeinated lemur, as always, glad to see you, even if you were only able to be here for a minute. Always glad when you guys can make it to a stream, so have a good one. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of your Friday. Yeah, somehow General Quarters returned. Uh, they they were in the stream once before, in the company once before, and died. And before I put a stop to people buying back in, they uh, General Quarters was one of the people that bought back in before I stopped folks from doing that. So uh, they are one of the few reincarnated souls. Uh, but Mate, you're right, generally speaking, you always want to take the salvage. The only problem with a duel is, even if you take max salvage, you usually don't get what you're looking for. Um, in this case, we probably would have, but let him learn. Nothing to be done about it now. But somebody said maybe we have a crusader in storage, which I did not remember seeing that, but maybe we do. Oh, no, we do. There's actually a Crusader. How about that? Well, uh, we would have to find a place that we can ditch one of these mechs. Once again, we have a lot of mechs and not a lot of space for them. Um, maybe, maybe we store the Goliath for right now. Save it for some mech heresy, some mech bay heresy sometime down the line. We'll go ahead and store it for now. Mostly so that we can put the Crusader together and then immediately store that as well. So yeah, here's here's our Crusader, which I think I feel like the model is just a scaled up Phoenix Hawk. Maybe I'm wrong. Ah, uh, but we'll go ahead and store that as well. I I don't see us using it, to be perfectly honest. Uh Inferno ammo for what, track tension? Uh Karos will get the sleigh eventually. Um but we need at least one spot in the mech bay that we can play around with for the time being. And we'll we'll need to do some mech bay heresy on the sleigh before we take it into the field. So we'll, we'll save that for a little bit down the line. Oh no, for now I'm just going to keep the Crusaders stored up. Track tension. I mean, just about everybody in the company has, like, their own dedicated mech at this point. Although we do still have a few to upgrade. Like, I wouldn't mind upgrading the Dervish. A um, couple other mechs like that. But most everybody in the company has their own mech. But anyway, back to the command center. Back to the command center. We got one more Torian mission. And actually, are we ally status yet? No, we're almost there, though. And this is an assassination mission. It's one and a half skulls. Probably not going to be too bad. Yeah, the Crusader would be an upgraded dervish, for sure. Um, the issue with that is, again, going to be our tonnage limit. That's, that's of the current obstacle that we need to overcome, is until we get our tonnage limit upgraded, uh, we're going to be kind of limited in what we're able to take out on each battle, because right now our limit is 800 tons, I think. Which seems like a lot until you put force assault mechs in. And then suddenly 800 tons is not that much. So if we load up our existing Lance comp, for whatever reason, oh right, it's complaining about the diet awesome because it's damaged. Uh, it's complaining about the Disco Inferno because it is not ready. Or it is no longer existing. We have it stored. Let's see, Gravelion, yeah, you're going to have to sit this one out too because the Bug Zapper is currently being worked on. Uh, Karos is laid up in the med bay, so we're going to need somebody else to fly the gunship. I guess the boss can do that. 
take the high-risk job. In the meantime, man, we got two executioners, and I always have problems remembering which belongs to who. I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? The same. Rex. Tell me your secrets, Rex. Uh, executioner B. All right. Uh, sure. That's not a B, but we're going to go with it. Uh, we can do that. You're right, Erst. We can put you in. We we can let you take out the, the hatchet man for the first time. Game Master is currently injured, so we're going to need a replacement for him, at least for one battle. Unfortunately, we don't have an additional vehicle pilot. That is not great. Uh, track tension, I'm not sure what the maximum tonnage is. Uh, I want to say it's roughly a thousand or so. Oh, you're right. Without the bug zapper, Graveline could fill in and the Rommel. Just for this one fight. And then we got one more mech that we can take. And we've got 45 tons to play with. Which unfortunately doesn't give us any options. Well shit. I guess we gotta go one mech short then, as much as I don't like that, because we don't have another vehicle readied up, and we don't have any lighter mechs. Let's see. Yeah, if we put in the Stormcrow, we're over the 800 ton limit. If we put in one of the Hunchbacks, we're still gonna be over the limit, no matter who we put in it. Yeah. Alright, well, it's not a big deal. It's a one and a half skull mission. It's, it's not a big deal. Hi, I'm I'm not that worried about us being one mech short. If this were a three, three and a half, four skull, I would consider waiting it out, but yeah. We're probably, I mean, we're definitely taking way more tonnage than we need for this mission anyway, so it'll be all right. It will be all right. Uh, we might downsize Mara because once we start this flashpoint, we're going to be doing missions back to back. And I think that'll be a good opportunity for us to get the rookies and the hunchbacks in again. With this being uh, like, I think it's a one and a half skull planet. It'll be a good opportunity to get some training for the rookies in an environment where they're not quite as at risk as they have been recently. So no worries. So it's too late now, Bolo. Too late now. Although I don't remember if we're actually taking the Naga on this one. I think we are. All right, Jim and I will. No worries. Have a good lurk. We'll be here for a little bit. That looks like a hit and run operation. I don't know if an assassination is a hit and run. I mean, I know that's how it's intended. We're just supposed to go and kill the target and leave. But the way these missions are set up, if we don't immediately start in contact with the enemy, which we are, but even if we didn't start in immediate contact with the enemy, we usually still have to fight our way through them to even get to the target, so... All right. We are looking... Oh, wow. All right. Was not expecting a Bellafron. There's an axe, man. All right. So maybe... Maybe immediately after doing all of this goofy work on the hatchet, man, we're about to upgrade it anyway. There's another Thunderbolt. As we know, Thunderbolts are, are very, very good for their weight class. Very versatile mechs. Uh, and then we get another 65 tonner out here. With it being Steiner, they're pro I mean, that could be another Thunderbolt. Could be a lot of things with it being Steiner. Either way.
Let's, let's look at getting some visual recap. Not quite enough. That's all right. Yeah, it could be a Jaeger as well. We, we have not actually fought Steiner in quite some time, so... It'll be interesting to see what we end up against. Actually, the, yeah, this guy's facing his rear armor towards us. I don't... I mean, I know they got spawn protection, but... I'd be insane not to take a shot at the guy's rear armor. And it's a good thing we did. Ah, uh, let's see. I think we're gonna cheese the rest of the turn. And they're probably gonna do the same thing. Steiner? Guys? There we go. Oh, it's a catapult! Alright, we, uh, we haven't seen one of these since last stream, when, uh, there was one amongst the pirate forces that we were fighting. You can do a lot of goofy stuff with a catapult. Well, that kind of hurt a little bit. What was that? I didn't even check to see what the sax man was pat- Oh, that's an LBX-20. Okay. Yeah, that might be a bigger threat than I initially thought. And those are AC-5s, so not as concerned about those. And this catapult is LRMs and medium lasers. Um... What? There we go. Thought it was my turn and it wasn't showing me anybody to move, so I was a little concerned. I'll be careful with that hubris there, Gravel Lion. Battle tag. There we go. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, decent shot on the axe man. And decent shot on the Bellafron as well. I think the Axe Man's the bigger threat though with that LBX 20. I mean, I would like to full salvage it for our mans, but uh, an LBX 20 ain't nothing to sneeze at. Of course, then again, if we don't hit, it's largely a moot point. Mara, let's go ahead and move you back into this defilade a little bit. And I think the obvious shot is going to be at this guy in the back and see if we can get some splash damage. And once again, it landed in another area code, but we'll go with it. Ah, uh, let's see. Trying to decide. I guess we go this way. It doesn't matter. It's a tank. It has a turret. Everything is fair game. Good hits, good hits. All right. Uh, our man's is ready. He is ready to go. Unfortunately, we're not in actual melee range of anything. We could charge. Again, at a risk of some pretty substantial damage to ourselves. But, uh, uh, what's the call, Erst? You want to charge? You want to play it safe? You got 99% chance to charge this bell of rhyme. Uh, you say stop and shoot, Viking. But yeah, that's my main concern as the Axe Man, is we're going to be in melee range of the Axe Man. But, again, we are known for our good tactical decisions. Keep in mind, one of the tags on this stream is untactical for a reason. Alright, well, I'm, I'm going to take Earth's answer as a yes charge, so let's do it.
All right. Now to keep that in mind, we do still have most of our company uh, available to put the hurt on the Axeman to at least attempt to slow it down, which we will absolutely do. So we're going to give him a full alpha from the nice rack, as you do. Because 80 LRMs is kind of difficult to weather, unless you're in an assault mag. And this should be just enough to push this man's over the edge. Wow, we... Uh, apparently, all of his weapon systems are gone. So let's see if we can get him to eject. Then again, which arm is the axe in? Oh, no, he still has the axe. All right, so he's still a threat. Bolo, what say we answer missiles with missiles, eh? If the catapult wants to shoot missiles, we'll show him what real missiles look like. And let's see, with the Eddie Quick Shots, which is an executioner, we'll give him the PPCs and the Rocket Launcher 40, as you do. Because rockets are a periphery girl's best friend. L listen, it's not a flamer. It's a rocket launcher. It's okay. It's okay. Do we... There we go. We do, in fact, have a shot on the axe man. Hopefully, we'll get enough hits on this one to knock him over, because he's very, very critical on the stability damage. And engine destroyed. That gives us how many parts? Three salvageable parts. That's not bad. So if we can get all three parts, then we only need to get one more somewhere down the line to get ourselves an axe, man. That's pretty good, in my opinion. Would have been better to get full salvage the whole way through, but... Aha! Uh -huh. Why do you do this to me? Why do you do this to me? Yep, I never turned on the game audio. You are... Goddamn right, because I'm an idiot and I do dumb things. There you go. You should have game audio now. If not, let me know. It's pretty quiet, but you should still have it. Ah, uh, let's see. What what are you what are you what are you gonna do, computer? Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. Uh, let's see, who's, who are we going to give the business to? I think we just keep beating up on the same guy, but at the same time, it makes more sense to me to move for the evasion. So we'll do the move, we'll do the punch. Yeah, that's right, we can't use, can't use abilities and melee in the same turn. It's unfortunate. So let's do the punch. Because the, the lasers are torso mounted, Oh, you want to do weapon? Okay. All right, all right. Melee weapon it is. And again, because the lasers are torso mounted... A noble blow indeed. They can fire regardless. And we got good hits on them. You love to see it. Ooh, that was the torso. I was expecting it to be the arm. Confirmed. Outstanding. Outstanding. I think we're going to battle lord on the tank, and we will take a shot at the catapult. Doing more damage, and cause the knockdown because of the stability. You love to see it. Take a dirt nap, loser. You earned it. Standing by. And I think we are KO out of nowhere. Oh no, maybe not. We will get close then. And what do we got? We got infernos, we got tandems... I think we just stick with the regular ammo. 
All right, Ajax. Well, as always, glad to see you. Glad you could make it. Hopefully, you had a good time. And if we don't see you again, have a great rest of your day and an outstanding weekend. Uh, also, we we do not currently. Uh, at this stage of the game, to me, it it's just not worth the trouble. It slows the turns down, and I yeah. just don't like dealing with the logistics of having to deal with battle armor, if I'm being perfectly honest. So we'll go ahead and battle lord, because that's what you do. And uh, then hit him with the full alpha. Roger. Because that's also the thing that we do. And Sierra rolling into the chat without a word, immediately smacking you guys with 10 gift subs. Sierra, welcome to the stream, and thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs. If you got a sub and you're in the chat, be sure to thank Sierra for their massive generosity, Ready and as always, massive chicken. Ah, uh, let's see. Bolo! Screw it, we'll battle Lord, and we will drop the rock directly on this catapult. Yellow swag. And it looks like we got at least one direct hit there, Critical which you love hit. to see. Yes, Commander. Bamboozle, you already got a shot, so we don't even need to move. We'll just go ahead and tell. Oh, god damn it, we do have to move. Well, fine. I was going to intensify firepower, but it looks like we're just going to have to go for the center torso instead. And there goes the capital. Everything you've got. Only one salvageable part. So that leaves two uh, mechs in not great shape. But hey, kudos to the Thunderbolt for sticking it out all the same. God bless it. Standing by. So for those of you that don't know, there is a little bit of a bug in BTA where you go to select people from the bar here and it just cycles the bar instead of selecting. I do not like it when that happens, but I also don't know how to stop it from happening. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to battle lord with the gauss rifles on this thunderbolt. Maybe we get a kill? We will see. Firing all weapons. No kill. And no destruction either. What's up, boss? But you know what'll do it? A full alpha from a nice rack. Then again. Then again. Then again, let's shoot at the head, just for fun. Not them. Let's do this. I don't know if we actually They're got the headshot. Yeah, one salvageable part, that was basically just obliterated that man. AFP, you know what time it is. Full alpha melee, please. Copy that. Putting my weight in. And there's the laser vomit. Reporting critical hit. And that's one PPC gone. Talk to me. Rex, can you actually? No, you're gonna have to charge. And we know, we all know, don't melee with the clan no mech. It's a bad idea and it never works out. So just don't do it. Instead, PPC and rockets, you know, the full alpha treatment. And as if to prove my point, the Thunderbolt weathered that in... in... What's the plan? Let's just say there's a reason that Thunderbolts have a lot of respect in my book. It's go time. To take a beating like that and not only not explode, but Order. still be standing is an impressive feat no matter how you slice it. And unfortunately, we're not within our minimum distance, so okay, I think we just nice. move and be Roger. done with it. Let's see what you're going to do with your last turn on the planet. Nothing. Okay. Uh, yep. I mean, if you weren't going to do anything, then why didn't you just eject, buddy? Roger, Skipper. Taking it. Is it a... Is it a pride thing? And there we go. Start Thunderbolt down. down. Probably thanks to the machine gun. 
So, Davian Noble is going to be, what, way out in the middle of nowhere? Oh, just over here. All right. Come, Nerevar. Friend or traitor, come. Well, that sounds like a job for Erst. Uh, Magda, I don't believe so. Um, this is 3062, which in the timeline is before the Dark Age, so... Um, I know that some, like, prototype Dark Age stuff has made its way into BTA, but... By and large, you're not gonna see much of that here. Um, if you are interested in playing, and I, I don't know how familiar you are with BTA and Battletech in general, but, uh... I do, for the folks that like more of the later age stuff, the Rogue Tech mod actually has a lot more of that in there. Um, my only complaint about Rogue Tech is obviously the performance, but uh, that's another matter entirely. Um, I'm just gonna like shoot in this direction. I probably shouldn't be wasting Arrow 4 ammo because it's kind of expensive, but... Wow, we didn't even get Darius telling us that we damaged the target. That's some BS right there. Uh, track tension, you cannot actually drop too heavy for a mission. The you, you get a tonnage limit that says you can only drop X amount of tons. Um, and as long as you're within that limitation, yeah, there's there's nothing else. Standing by. I know that uh, a lot of mech games have tried to toy with being over tonnage and how to restrict that, but BTA doesn't really care. As long as you buy the upgrades, they'll let you drop as much tonnage as you can feel. Even in a case like this where it's kind of unwarranted and completely unnecessary. Like, do we need this many mechs? No. Do we need this much tonnage? No. But we're doing it anyway. Yes, Commander. Got your back. I am genuinely surprised, though. Uh, yeah, Simage, it's a Friday stream. Uh, I do like to stream on Fridays when and where I can. That's just, uh, my schedule doesn't always allow it. But in this case, things worked out favorable for me, so... We went ahead and, and decided to do a Friday stream. So, welcome to it, by the way. Hopefully your Friday's going well. How might I help? Uh, let's see. We will confirm. Oh, uh, god damn it. I forgot. You can't shoot at the ground when you use an ability. Domex. Yeah, uh, see, we, we did have that one mission against Comstar where they threw a bunch of light mechs at us. That was... I'm glad we haven't had too many more missions like that. Oh, we're, like, completely out of turn-based mode at this point. All right. Where is this donkey? Oh, we're going in the wrong damn direction. I'm, like, going this way. He's over here. Shit. No wonder the artillery didn't hit anything. Oh, um... Probably not a great idea, but let's do it. Confirmed. Our primary target is taking All right, damage. we did some damage, so we know he's over there. Well, you say that, Dutch Irishman, but uh, I'm always interested in adding a little chaos to the equation. Show them what you got. And yes, I know exactly what I said. Fight me. And we are dealing with a- Really? Really? After all that they just threw at us, this mission, and the targets in a frickin' cicada. Alright. That's not what I would have gone with if I wanted to survive, but you can do what you like. Uh-oh. What happened, Bolo? Oh, 
hour. Are you unhappy about uh, come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. About my willingness to to embrace less puritanical methods? I mean, are you really surprised? Consider what we do on the daily in this company and then and then rethink that and tell me you're surprised. Am I a chaos, wor chaos worshipper? No, but I have been known to dabble. I'm on him. Hey, listen, when you call heretical, I call liberal. Open minded, perhaps. Uh. Thorian, I am not. And if you get that reference, Hunter? you've spent far too much time playing Inquisitor. And Flagluck, welcome to the stream on a Friday. Good to see you. Glad you could make it. Glad you could make another stream. Yeah, I don't really like Get Radical. Going. Radical makes it sound like, you know, what we're doing is bad. It's, you know... It's only bad if you view it through a certain lens. Which I don't. And welcome back, Sierra. Let's see what you got. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Flaglock, and I'm glad that I'm... Doing a good enough job that you want to come back for two for two. Reporting. Means I'm doing something right, at least. The whole broke clock being right twice a day thing. Let's see, can we get the lucky precise strike? Wilco. Ah, so close. So close. Enjoy. Receiving you. Alright, Oss, uh, so let's see. Let's see if we can get you into a position where you've got a decent shot. And then... I mean, go for the center torso. It doesn't really matter. There we go. There we go. We're doing some damage. I mean, Radical can absolutely mean good things if you use it the right way. Like, if we're talking about... You know, Radical and Bodacious, for example... Radical law? Yeah. Radical's a good thing. And that's one less Davian noble in the inner sphere, which I think we can all agree is a good thing. Mission successful. Remember... Hit and run tactics are for cowards. The real mech warriors don't leave until all the enemies are dead. All right. 16, well, 17 KC bills. Salvage probably isn't going to be great on this one for obvious reasons, but let's see what we've got. We obviously want the Axeman parts. That's, that's a given. Uh, I know we had some catapult parts, but I don't remember how many. It looks like we only had one. Well, poop. I guess we could take another one. Then again, LBX-20 though. That's really tempting, and we don't have one. Yeah, I gotta say screw the catapult. LBX-20 all the way. We can do some nasty, nasty things with an LBX-20. And we got the catapult part anyway, so it all worked out in the end. Uh, you know, I think, other than the LRM ammo, I think we keep everything else. 
Yeah. Well, we could probably ditch the medium lasers. It'll be alright. Well, the other thing is, if I recall, LBX auto cannons, I think, are also a little bit lighter than their regular counterparts. Which means we might have the option of sti sticking an LBX-20 into one of the hunchbacks. Oh no, Erst, it's not only is it always good, it's also always goof. Because there will be much goofing when, when some mofos step to our LBX-20s. Darius, why are you the way you are? Fine, let's go to the barracks. Let's go to the barracks. Commander. Because you clearly cannot help yourself. Training complete. Awaiting orders. Okay, I will admit we did actually have some people that needed to level up. Uh, uh, let's see. For someone piloting a artillery mech, I think, honestly, piloting is going to be the better pick, but we might as well just go Training with complete. an even split here. Yes, Commander. Cody, oh, uh, that's right. I don't... I, I don't remember where I put my notebook, but, uh, Cody, what is your other skill specialization? I feel like I wrote it down, but I don't know where my notebook is. It's somewhere here. I, I moved it from my desk, and I don't want to get up to go find it. I don't know if you're still in the chat, but if you are in the chat, speak up and let me know. Right now, you're currently specking into tactics, but you can spec into another skill. So let me know which what you want that other skill to be. Awaiting orders. You are, in fact, still alive, Dark Sarah. Reporting. What's up, boss? For how much longer remains to be seen, but we're definitely going to be getting the rookies on the field. Uh, since we're on a relatively easy planet, so it'll be a good opportunity. And Stand Cody by. says gunnery. Gunnery it is. Um, but yeah, uh, we're, we're on a relatively easy planet. As these things go. Training confirmed, Commander. So it'll be a good opportunity to get the the rookies out on the field and get them a little more experience. Orders. Ah, God, I was asleep. Awaiting orders. Let's see. How might I help? Mara's not quite there. How can I help? And we got a lot of our people that are very, very close. Mech warrior training complete. Let's see. Yeah, we're we're actually pretty close to having a couple more pilots reach max on all levels. That would be good. We'll certainly not complain about that. I think piloting is going to be better for a brawler mech rather than tactics. Although tactics definitely has its place. Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. And I think we'll hold out on Erst for that last level of gunnery. I mean, that's fair, Erst. I, I, too, am an infantry guard player, or was. So, I know that feel. Rolling for locational damage, or, I mean, there are some times when rolling for an, a round of shadow run takes less dice than a hundred guardsmen. So, I won't complain. And Kailania making it into the stream on a Friday. Welcome to the stream, Kailania. Good to see you. Glad you could join us. Hopefully you are having an outstanding Friday so far. Ah, uh, there we go. So that's good. Uh, mech Bay, is there anything that we really need to do in the Mech Bay right now? I don't think so. I don't think so. She says, with a great deal of uncertainty. Eh, yeah, screw it. Command center it is. Alright, time to hit the flare-up. 
but we're going to start it out. And hopefully, by the time we get done with this flare-up, we might actually be able to ally with the Torians. Uh, Aussie Viking, I always recommend, if you've never played Battletech before, I always recommend that you at least play through the campaign on vanilla first, just to get a feel for a lot of the systems and the basics of how the game plays. Uh, because the two big mod packs, BTA and Rogue Tech, both build upon those fundamentals. And they don't do a great job of explaining those fundamentals to you. So you miss a lot of the tutorialization and the learning. The campaign is, more than anything, a great way to introduce yourself to the way the game plays. And then you can take that knowledge into the mod packs and build on it from there. Because both mod packs have their own massive sets of additional features and things like that. Um, and it does take a little while to learn that stuff. So trying to learn that on top of the fundamentals can make it very difficult. Not to mention, you can play through the vanilla campaign if you're not entirely sure if this is the game for you. You can always buy just the base game, play through the campaign, and then if you like it, go for the DLC and the additional mods and all that stuff. Um, let's see. Anything else? We still got the, we still got the engineering project. I think we're good. I think we fast forward and wait for our next contract. Ray notification's gonna be in one day. Seek and destroy, all right. How is that different from... Is that different from a battle? Oh no, it is a battle mission. Okay, well let's go ahead and launch it. I'm sorry? What? Oh, this is... Okay, I thought the flashpoint was over for a second, and I was very confused. I was like, the flashpoint just started. How is it over? No, this is for the fight we just had against Clan Wolf. It's just because we haven't fast-forwarded time yet, it hasn't triggered this. So we just, we just got the reputation buff with Clan Wolf from the battle that we fought three missions ago. So yeah, I, I was a little confused. My bad, chat. My bad. And Jimbo, I see you out there. Welcome to the stream on a Friday. Sorry if I missed you earlier. I feel like I might have seen you in chat before, but... Either way, welcome to the Friday stream. Hopefully you're having an outstanding Friday. Uh, I think we'll go win the standard, full salvage. Again, these are going to be pretty easy missions, so I'm not super worried about it, but every once in a while you find something good in these lower level missions. And let's see. I did say we were going to put some rookies on the field. So let's do it. Um, Here's what we're going to do. Since Bolo volunteered to sit a few out, that's what we're going to do. We'll put in the rookies on the back line. Uh, I say we put Cody in, and Dark Sarah, I think you were in something besides one of the Hunchbacks, though. Yeah, we've been putting you in the Storm Crow. Is there anybody else that we were putting in a Hunchback? I don't think so. I don't think so. Alright, then we'll put in the Storm Crow, and we'll get Dark Sarah in there. Don't. Oh. Shit. Well, I meant to put Ost back in, but again, easy mission. We'll be okay if we're short one mech. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Uh, what, what, what are you guys talking about? Fuel air bombs? Oh. Yeah. I saw Nuyen and air fuel bombs, and I was like, what the hell are y'all talking about in chat? Uh, 
Ah, oh, that's all right, Car. We're always glad to have you. Late, early, whatever. As long as you made it, that's all that matters. Yeah? And Sierra. Been very silent in chat, but I see you out there smacking our boy Car. So, Car, welcome back to the Cult of Bad Tactical Decisions. Glad to have you. And Sierra, again, thank you for the generosity. Oh yeah, for sure, Mara. It's it's runner tug, and that's exactly what made my my ears, or I guess my eyes, perk up when I see Nui, and I'm like, wait, what? What's the job? How much? I talk about the Johnson, but it's too easy to take that kind of stuff out of context. You know how it is. All right. And we are dealing with fog, because we love fog. Man, a raptor, look at that. It's been a while since we've seen one of those. Been quite some time since we saw a raptor. Well, let's go ahead and cheese it. We've got a, we got an elevation advantage for sure. And a rattlesnake. Again, been quite some time since the last time we've seen one of these. But yeah, with an elevated position... I'm gonna let them do their thing, and then we're gonna schwack them. Standing by. You have orders? And since they decided to shoot at Mara, I think Mara is gonna shoot back. But let's find a good place to move you first. Oh, there isn't really a good place to move you, unfortunately. I was hoping to at least... There we go. I was going to say, get you into the tree line at least for some cover. And, uh, let's see. Oh, sex number? Sex number on the fire starter. Can't argue with that. Sex number don't fail us now. And there goes half of that fire starter in a single volley. Yeah, that was indeed a solid connection. Orders. In the meantime, let's fly out here Understood. and Moving get some back. visual recap. Not seeing much besides the mechs in front of us. Yes, Commander. But you know what? You love to see it. Roll to that. Makes our lives easier. Docking on. And there goes one. Yeah, this is this is gonna be a very simple mission for us, I believe. In fact, so much so. I think I'll send in the rookies first and actually give them an opportunity to do some damage. Cause otherwise all the veterans are just gonna soak up all the experience and this will have all been for nothing. There we go. There we go. Yeah, Blake in this mission's gonna be done. Very, very likely. Have to kill. Aye, aye. And then Dark Sarah. Oh, God. Dark Sarah, how'd you end up all the way down here? Well, you might not be able to make it before the mission is over, unfortunately. Confirmed. I got you. Well, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, no, clearly Dark Sarah saw something very interesting down the side of this mountain and decided to go check it out. It's alright. Come, Nerevar. Friend or traitor, come. To each their own. Acknowledged. And let's give him the full alpha laser vomit. Engaging. Did not do as much damage as I was hoping for on that one. Standing by. So instead, we'll give him the RKO out of nowhere. Ten four. Once again, not not doing nearly as much damage as I was hoping. Come, Nerevar, friend or traitor, come. First, I was hoping you'd get a little closer, but... What a grand and intoxicating innocence. Apparently some terrain difficulties. But hey, you know what? 
Have we you can any ping. parting words? Who else can go? Um, I've got your back. I'll give Rex an opportunity. I always love to fire rocket launchers in anger. Copy that. Even if we only hit with like three of them. That was a critical hit, lad. My flamer is out of fuel. And you know what? Them some good at Sierra, make it hot. I'm just imagining the Ralph Wiggum. Stop! Stop! He's already dead. Successful. But the missiles just keep coming because they're already in the air. Yeah, I have switched uh, the commander portrait around a couple of times. I'm just, it's weird. It's, it's like changing your shoes or painting your nails. It's just one of those things. I felt like going with the more stylized portrait for a little while, so I switched it out again. Yeah, there was there wasn't a whole lot left of that rattlesnake after that volley, but that's that's the whole point of the nice rack, you see. It's difficult to argue with 80 LRMs coming your direction. Even the fastest mechs have a tough time dodging all of that firepower. And that is intentional. Oh, let's see. What do we want? I mean, none of this stuff is really speaking to me, but I guess we can take the medium lasers because it's four of them on a single slot, which means we can sell them for money. Um, maybe take the fire starter part. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not... And we're we're not really gonna be getting great salvage off of this. We're gonna be selling most of this stuff. Um I guess we'll keep the LRM fives just to like build up our stocks of inner sphere weaponry. How many of these only got one? Wow, okay. I mean, I guess it would have been more fitting if we had killed the rattlesnake with overwhelming auto cannon fire. It'd be kind of poetic. But uh, unfortunately, we just didn't have the firepower in place. <laughs>